would say get curious faster, right? Like it, it became my best virtue. And as a kid and a teenager, and even in my early 20s still, the fear of revealing what you don't know is so restricting and prohibitive. And so that to me has really made me feel comfortable in my own skin and just you know, being comfortable with who you are Thing comes first and it enables curiosity because you don't have that block of revealing something that you don't know or I don't know what people might think of you. Hey everyone, it's our SaaS and tech interviews with expert and our guest today is John Green. John is a CEO and co-founder of an outstanding startup called Mada. Hi John, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for your time. So um, Nada is basically a platform that redefines new ways to own and uh, access a real estate uh, assets. And I've heard recently that your guy is doing pretty well. I've heard that you recently closed a uh, seed round and you closed it with $8 million. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you, you are correct and I think that, yeah, we, we have a tremendous team and, and investors and we're very fortunate. Congre Congratulations on that. So uh, for those who haven't heard yet, could you please tell a little bit more what is NADA and what you guys doing there? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do so. NADA is a real estate finance platform and we are making, just as you said, real estate ownership more accessible for everyone. So this is really through uh, a couple of key innovative financial products mm -hmm. and then delivered and experienced you know, the technology. Mm -hmm. So our first product is, is HomeShares product. The HomeShares product allows for homeowners to turn their equity into cash, uh, to use for everyday spending, whatever they you know, need to pay down, whether it's school or whatever, and to do so without the burden of new debt. So uh, there's no monthly payments, there's no exposure to interest rates, and of course they don't have to move out of their home. So it's a much more flexible and accessible way to, to access equity as, as cash. Mm -hmm. our, our other key product, and these two work in concert, is City Funds. The City Funds product is a family of real estate funds. And it, they make it possible for everyone to own a piece of a top city's residential real estate market. Um, we've made these in a way to where they're index-like. So they're meant to represent a single city's real estate market in this case, the homeowner equity, because they're, they're owning the, the home shares product. And so we have Austin, we have Dallas, Tampa, Miami, and we pulled them together in these real estate funds. And we worked with the SEC to get a qualified investment offering that's available to the everyday investor, not just accredited investors, but everyone. So you, you can, for just $250, someone can own a, you know, a, a pool of homeowner equity in, in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, without having to go through all the challenges of home ownership or the financial burdens to get there. Uh, just the same, they don't have to be an accredited investor. It's just for, uh, you know, any investor. Uh, so, you know, we're making ownership and, and access and really this this asset as a means of creating wealth and, you know, uh, kind of growing family. So that's our old core. I guess if we tie them all together, City Funds is the pool that owns and finances our home shares product. And, you know, that's how we kind of work in concert on two sides, if you will, one being the owner side and the other being on the, on the investor side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. And I know you're constantly growing. So how big is your company now? Uh, you know, that's, that's such a weird thing to measure. I, I don't know how you would measure that. We, uh, we've we grown the team probably 2x in the last, uh, oh, I'd say six months. And mm -hmm. Uh, you know, core team in, in contract kind of blends, but you know, we're all in it like 45 people. Um, but you know, full time employees were in the, the, the low 20s and still trying to hire some people in some key positions. So, that to me is a measurement of growth. They have great people, you know, really core culture being built. Um, and um, you know, our customers are really appreciating our products right now mm -hmm. in the current market. You know, real estate's a stable asset to get into, you're yeah. investing, and then. Accessing equity could really offset some of the, the impacts of inflation and other mm -hmm. you know, economic impacts. So we're, we're doing well and we're, we're, we're very fortunate. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, before we will go forth, um, I find it very interesting while doing interviews with different, obviously successful, ambitious and definitely talented people like yourself. I find it so much important to go a little bit back to the roots, um, just to discover a little bit of a background, what led them 
to the success that they obviously enjoying today and I would like to do the same with you especially that I think it's going to be very interesting but I've, because I've heard that you were a part of a punk rock band and uh, like could you tell a little bit about that experience in your life you were a musician yeah, yeah? yeah. I, appreciate, I appreciate your research on that <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's a you know I, I'm kind of this two part in, in my early 20s I was uh, a vocalist for a punk rock band And, uh, you know, I started it and had the opportunity to do that as, um, well, it was a full-time job, pretty much a full-time job, supporting this, this, uh, this difficult, for, for four, almost five years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we recorded our own albums. We did two albums. We published, you know, we wrote, published those. And um, we just toured nonstop. Mm -hmm. That was how you made money just then. And so much of that does very much roll into what, what this is. Um, but you know kind of getting out of that if we want to like kind of go through the how did I go from punk rock into, into finance yes yeah because you were a punk rock you know musician and now you're uh, creating ecosystem for normal like everyday yeah. homeowners so what was the transition <laughs> yeah it's just like everything is a journey right but yeah so, so much of that background gave me um, I, I, like my perhaps my, my best first shoe I'd say I could say that is curiosity I, I am perpetually curious And um, in being a marketer, you get very comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're having a yeah. bad day or you're not feeling the best about yourself, you still have to go out and perform in front of a bunch of strangers mm -hmm. and you, you don't want to not do well. So that, that, that pressure and drive to get out of your, your comfort zone, that helped. And so I found an opportunity to just join, you know, a mortgage company and get into financial services as touring started to slow. And that was more opportunity and network and then I found curiosity in this space mm -hmm. and then once it became like okay we're not going to pick up touring anymore it just became too much of a burden as we were you know we were uh, getting older and just you know it, it kind of runs course in a natural way mm -hmm. um, I applied those same that's what I knew you know I, I need to be very curious I need to be driven to create and driven to try to build and establish network or community if you will and so I, I probably agitated a lot of you know, uh, savvy, experienced people in that space early on because I was just asking every question I could and trying to be involved in everything I could. Um, and I, I didn't see this climb the ladder type. I just, that, that's what I wanted to do. That's how I understood value. Mm -hmm. and, and that really helped me quickly absorb that space. You know, I got to meet some amazing people and just consistently, and then being curious questions. Um, I, I just absorbed a lot and I found it very interesting. I found it, um, you know, fascinating from my perspective of bringing something to a community through like how you would with, with punk rock, it's kind of an underground thing. Yeah. You see that in the financial services, more specific and realistic mortgage, so much of that information and, and really the tools needed to, to like maximize that market is at the top. So it's usually the, the like the industry experts have it um, or the, the wealthy have it because they cut it from that, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really disseminate. And that was just always so agitating to me. Like, Um, I wanted to make it more simple, I wanted to make it more accessible, and I tried to do that, you know, throughout, and it, it helped me prepare, but that's, you know, I, I kind of have these dueling, dual voices now, because I, I spent over a decade in, mm -hmm. in financial services, so I, in, mainly in risk management and a strategy type role, so pretty structured roles, where we're structured in, you know, process design, and regulatory mm -hmm. navigation is very critical, mm -hmm. so I have this you know, non-conformist punk rocker voice in me pushing the envelope <laughs> and I have this very structured financial services, yeah. um, you know, risk, respect regulations and, and uh, you know, the way to navigate that. So it helped balance me. Mm -hmm. It's, it's probably it's interesting, me for this. interesting conversation happening in your head between those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep what's going on in my head, maybe a little light. Yeah. There's so, a lot going on. Yeah, that, that is very interesting. So if you could pick and define one thing that you can take from your, you know, musician, punk rock experience that helped you with what you're doing now, what would that be? <laughs> it's, it's more of a mindset, mm -hmm. you know, a mindset to, to know, to, to have the grit and grind and conviction to create something. Yeah. Like there's so much vulnerability and challenge in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I kind of put it to an example. 
the, the, as a band going out, writing your own music, practicing it with other people, so you and your team, and then that's fun. But then when you go get in front of a bunch of strangers and you perform it, that that takes a lot of, you know, if you care about it, that takes a lot of you know conviction in it. Mm-hmm. And understanding how to get that here with this team and build products that we're going to deliver to the public is it, so much the same. And there's so many little things like the release of our app right now feels very much like the release of a part or uh, one of our albums from the Browns in the band because we built and designed this app months yeah. ago but we're just now releasing it yeah and so I, I can recall you know, it was the same thing with the right before so there are parallels yeah yeah very much so yes yeah, yeah pretty much just so the, you're going to the stage and it's with the with the concert you just have to rock the stage yeah you have to perform yeah you have cool. to have yeah. confidence in yourself and your team And then happened nada in your life, and uh, um, you are located in Texas. Yes, yes, company. we are. We are headquartered in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Actually, most of our uh, team and investors are in Austin. Yeah, great. So, based on your experience, would you say that uh, being in Texas helped you, or made or made it harder for uh, for you to start your business? Like, are there particular in your opinion specific environment um, aspects that influence influence the startup yeah uh, that's a really good question Texas is a great community for startups in the way that like there is really community yeah um, so you know like our some of our early supporters were uh, the University of Texas at Austin and we were part of a program that they did and they sponsored the networks now out of this latest round our largest investor um it is live ventures also austin based also deep connections to university of texas at austin mm-hmm. so that's that's critical austin is a great market for a hub there dallas is very different but mm-hmm. it, it balances as well yeah dallas is not yet very startup like it's not very communal in that way um We're trying to play a role in that, just make it more so. There's great startups here that are more scattered. What Dallas has is a very structured finance sector, so a lot of independent mortgage companies uh, are here. Um, you know, a lot of established real estate companies. So we have, you know, an abundance of finance. You know, whether it's the banking side or the real estate side, mm-hmm. that's available to us here, and, and that's been tremendous. And then it's just kind of you got to balance the two, the Austin and Dallas. So Texas as a whole, mm-hmm. uh, you know has been great it's you know, i think a lot of uh, you know in, investors and startups are relocating maybe more so to austin but it's not that far true that and for those uh, let's say who are thinking now to establish their business their startup or moving um to the texas let's say dallas or austin would you give any recommendations or cautions or would you focus something that they should be aware of like particular things about the texas environment Um, if if you if you were a startup and you're looking to come to Texas and, and maybe raise capital, mm-hmm. I would say get to know the history of Texas venture capital. Yeah. Because you can start with maybe Austin uh, Texas venture capital is kind of like the OG fund that's gone now. Maybe work your way down from there. So really understanding mm-hmm. network to me has always helped me. Yeah. So you can kind of find where people went and what's popped up. Mm-hmm. So that way you. You know, unlike if you're in, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, LA, like uh, California or something where there's like an abundance. I think here it's so much around the personal connections and understanding the journeys and trying to identify with that people will, will, will really help. Yeah. Um, so I would I would advise that I would look at where you're going to be based on talent too, mm-hmm. or ensure you're prepared to have certain the functions be, you know, uh, distributed remote uh, these are things to think about because it's you, you kind of got to mix it to where you're going to get certain talent in certain areas and certain talent in different talent mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool. thank you so. yeah um i always i just can't imagine how busy you are right now running a big company running and leading those people i know that you you, you participate in many interviews including ours you participate pod, podcasts and i can imagine how busy you are knowing that you also have a family and your father yeah. of, of two beautiful kids so how do you prioritize your work 
and if you could give a couple of tips and advices for a new founders how to do so could you please tell us how do you do that in your life it's it, it is a great question in a constant struggle that I, I highly recommend everyone be very conscious enough yeah. you know what's growth and better partners and you'll call it success uh, in, in your journey it is more demanding yeah. and something's going to give and you have to really embrace it I think at home so whatever you have at home so you have a partner if you have a family really think about that so that mm -hmm. set those expectations first and then kind of build your business day around that I, I feel like that makes you a better person and leader mm -hmm. um, because it, it, it doesn't have this push and pull effect if you set that at home I am constantly working on that but that's that's something that's important for me and I would for me I, I write I write down a few things that I know I want to do in a day yeah. and I draw a little circle by them so I can check it off yeah. but I make sure that they're things I know I can achieve that day I don't like to roll things over until the next day. I'll keep those somewhere else. But that way I feel like some sense of accomplishment on the things I'm doing. And then as I'm growing, it's a lot of these things that I'm doing is really talking to the people that are into you know, doing and doing a better job than I could. So I'm, that I'm helping and enabling them. Mm -hmm. So it isn't being a lot of conversations, but really focusing on trying to talk to everyone throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, trying to have at least two things that you know you can achieve that day so you don't feel like you just you kind of spun your wheels otherwise it will you'll be doing a lot of you know kind of dial pushing but not not really feeling accomplished and i think it's mm -hmm. well, there's a small thing you get something accomplished yeah those are your priorities well thank you beautiful um very last question of our let's say main part if you met a 10 year old john what you what would you tell that then <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a great question. I didn't want. I didn't want to take it with a band, so I wanted to try to react to that. So, sure. um, I would say get curious faster, right? Like it, it became my best virtue, and as a kid and a teenager, and even in my early twenties, still, the fear of revealing what you don't know is so restricting and prohibitive, and so. That to me has really made me feel comfortable in my own skin and just you know, being comfortable with who you are, I think comes first and it enables curiosity because you don't have that block of revealing something that you don't know or I don't know what people might think of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, believe in yourself and ask questions. Well, be, be, be curious, that would be your... Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I've heard recently, it's a inter in very interesting phrase for me that um, very accomplished person also said I'm not brave I'm just curious so I guess yeah that's that's important that's well said yeah yeah so let's yeah. go to our rapid fire round your biggest regret oh. <laughs> I will tie it into something that you know I've had probably bigger regrets so I'll keep maybe some of the personal stuff but uh, we had an option to do a second album with my band, and we wrote some really good stuff, but we got too lazy and we missed the option period. And then we all just didn't do it with it. So all we have is raw tracks. You know, just for memory's sake, I'd like to have that. I see. Maybe it's never too late, you know, yeah, well, <laughs> for releasing it. Know. <laughs> <laughs> who knows, who knows. <laughs> okay, uh, one punk, forever punk? Yes. Yes, that is my comfort. I don't say I'm not saying I specifically listen to the same music, especially that when, when I was playing. You know, I still listen to certain things like that. The mindset, it's yes. Okay, so mainstream or underground? I I appreciate and participate in mainstream because it's it's the largest audience, and so but I identify with underground. Okay. Who is your business hero? Uh, um, there's there's a, a lot that, that I like. I like uh, you know um, the Patagonia story. I like I like the purpose driven you know, you know companies and, and the journeys of that. I like uh, you know uh, John Mackey and his journey with Whole Foods, and mm -hmm. the concepts and the, the, those 
you know, kind of purpose built into business logic and thinking mindset. So it's more of a of an idea than an individual person. Mm -hmm. Who is your personal life hero? Um, Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you, John. That's all from thank my you. side, and I do really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is this is amazing.